Welcome to January 8th of the year 2010, the seventh day of the week that the Lord proclaims as his Sabbath. I hope you all are using the day the same as the Lord would want you to. Well, brethren, let's get right on over into the Lord's care ministry, a year to keep your eyes on heaven, day eight of the year 2010, dealing with unanswered prayers. Again, brethren, I suggest you write the chapter and verse down on a pad and paper so that you can go back and study at your own leisure. Also, you can use the pause button down here in the corner to start and stop this video study. As we can go along, you can find the place in your own Bible. Well, brethren, with that, let's get started with a year to keep your eyes on heaven. Dealing with unanswered prayers. To do that, we'll go to Second Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 through 10. My gracious favor is all you need. My power works best in your weakness. That's Second Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 9. Just a week. We came home to a wonderful message on our answering machine. A woman from our church, my wife's good friend, called to say that her tumor was benign. She did not have cancer after all. We had been praying for such a miracle, and now these prayers have been answered. God is so good, she said exceedingly. We agreed aloud and thanked him for his kindness. Answered prayers have a way of lifting us all a notch or two. We love sharing stories of God's miracles, intervention in our life, and that's a good thing. Even as I write these words this evening, I wonder to myself, what if God had chosen not to heal her? Would he be any less wonderful? Would we still be praising him for his power and his goodness? Is God still good and merciful, even when our prayers go unanswered? Paul wrestles with that question in his letter to the Corinthian church. I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger from Satan to torture me, and keep me from getting proud. Paul confines in his brothers and sisters in the Lord. Three different times I begged the Lord to take it away. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 and 8. Paul did not just pray for help. He pleads for it. And what was God's response? My gracious favor is all you need. Second Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 9. In a word, God's answer was no to most faithful and trusted servant. God would not even heal the simple problem. Unbelievable. That is what I would think. But Paul was a, has a different response. So now I am glad to boast about my weakness. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9 and 10. In the midst of suffering and unanswered prayer, Paul continues to preach about God's goodness and power. God refuses a simple request, and Paul still praises his name. He still has the thorn, but glorifies God in spite of it. What does Paul understand that so many of us seem to have missed? Paul knows that grace is all he really needs. 
He knows that answered prayers are nice, but they have little to do with the big picture. He knows that God has already given him more than he ever deserved, more than any of us dare to ask for. And he knows that thorns are just a diversion from our real purpose. Temporal problems will not even be remembered in eternity. It is great to praise God's miracles, but let's not forget to praise him in silence. Why was Paul given a thorn in the flesh? What allowed him to boast in his weakness? Is there a thorn that keeps your mind off of God and purpose for you? Psalms chapter 2 and verse 6 reads, Thou art my son, this day I have begotten thee. Matthew 21 and verse 9 reads, Blessed is he that is coming in the name of the Lord. His grace is enough for me. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 9, My grace is sufficient for thee. Brethren, in God's word only do we trust, never in the tradition of men. Beware the tradition of man that makes void the word of God. Brethren, this is the seventh day, the Sabbath of the Lord. Go to Genesis chapter 2 and verses 2 and 3, and you will find that this seventh day is the only day he blessed. The rest and resting in them two verses is the Hebrew word sabbat, where we get our word for the Sabbath. All through the Bible, you will find that the Sabbath leads back to the Hebrew word sabbat. All through it, all the rest and resting leads back to the Lord's Sabbath. Do you lead to the Lord's Sabbath? Do you change the Sabbath to the first day? The the Lord will reject you for doing that. That is rejecting his Holy Spirit. That is rejecting his commandments. Brethren, do you want to follow the Lord on that Lord on that narrow path and get off that broad path that leads to destruction? Then ask the Lord to keep you on the straight and narrow path that leads to his salvation, his eternal salvation with the Lord. Well, brethren, with that we're going to close for today. You all have a great and wonderful day. I know I will. God willing, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.